you say yes, Lord. You say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yield to your way. Yes. As to your plan. Thank you, Lord. We will obey. Thank you, Lord. Let's experience today the light illumination and the intelligence of heaven. May this people in this room and those that maybe watch this later be blessed by you and never impressed by me. Speak and send your word. Let your word heal. Let your word destroy yokes. Let your word remove burdens. And we'll say yes, Lord. We'll posture ourselves in obedience. And we'll do what you say. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And thanks be to God. Clap your hands again. Try to move. But Jesus is here. Hallelujah. glad to be in church today. Well, were y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, yes. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, yes. Glory to Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to do exactly what I came to do today. I'm going to teach the word. Amen. Amen. All right. So I started something on Thursday called the Spirit of Government. It's the backdrop of a series we're going to teach all month called Citizenship. And what I'd like to do, because the Holy Spirit took me, I, I, I wanted to finish government today, but I'm going to finish it Thursday because the Lord gave me something else for today that ties into citizenship. And I want to talk about the concepts of dual citizenship. Uh, the reality is, the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Say that with me. Say, I'm in the world. But I'm not of this world. So that doesn't mean you be spooky and not be able to relate to regular people. It just means that you actually have another home country. Your genesis was not when you were born on earth. Matter of fact, the scripture says in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before God formed you, in the mother's belly, he knew you. Which means he, he actually gave you a real life before you actually were born. Touch your belly and say, he knows me. I want, it, I want you to understand something, that you have to have citizenship in both places. So let, let's start here. And I want you to write these things down because I'm going to just teach really. And um, I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. A citizen or citizenship is this. It's an individual's alliance, hear me, to a country, a allegiance to a country, to watch this, obey their laws, do what they say, in exchange for their protection, their provision. The freedoms that they give you under the auspices of the law. And as citizens of the United States, people in other countries, I've been privileged to go to four continents in my life. I've been all over this world. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is the first time I left the country and came back. I literally got off a plane and kissed the ground. I'm telling you, I put my lips on the ground. Because... Where I had come from, I had—I think this was the first time I went to Jamaica. I went on a mission trip with the church that I was a part of in college. And we did a series of meetings there. My pastor was preaching. We were helping him in ministry. But we was in Spanish town, Jamaica, very poor. And I'm like, you know what? I thank God for America. Because America makes sure, even in this democracy, that we 
we have a right to become whatever we want to become. Only the limits you have in this country, really, especially as a believer, is those you propose on yourself. So again, I kissed the ground because I, I had a new perception of my citizenship. On the flip side, once I understood I really wasn't from America, and then I had relationship with God the Father, and I was a citizen of heaven. Hear this. <laughs> it, gave, it gives me a deep appreciation from where I really come from. So watch this. I have to give my allegiance to God in exchange for his protection. Tuck Brooke Rookville and say, God protects me. Say, God provides for me. God really is not interested in us just being good Christians or being good church members. He wants to really transition us from membership to citizenship. And being a citizen means that my allegiance is to God and I have to do what he asks so I can get a right to the benefits that he has to give me. All right, so that's the first thing. So you got to pledge your allegiance to God. And you got to decide, I'm going to walk with God in every area of my life. We can't choose what we want to give to God and what we want to keep and expect God to honor his part of the covenant. The covenant he has with you and I is that he will take care of us. He will bless us. He will give us access to the things in heaven. But our life has to meet the criteria to experience that. Otherwise, we got a form of godliness and we deny the power thereof. That's a dangerous place that we can be in the church, know how to do church, know how to speak in tongues, know how to prophesy, know how to go through the motions of what we do in the building. And really, when we leave church, we never have any encounters through our lifestyle in God. That's a dangerous piece because that's where a lot of the church is. So what God does, he wants to give us access to our rights as a citizen. Part of what gives you access, and I taught this yesterday just by way of review, is your assignment. I'm not going to teach this again, so I think that strength this morning. Um, watch that message that I taught yesterday on coming out of the closet. The citizens of the kingdom got to come out of the closet. I told them yesterday, I taught a message, I taught that message under that same title about 25 years ago. I think the wrong people heard it. Because everybody started coming out of the closet. <laughs> like, okay, no, that's not what we were talking about. <laughs> what the message was not for you. You stay in and let's get you free. <laughs> but the church has to come out the closet. And I told them the assignment that's on our life, and I'm not going to teach you, I'm just going to give you the principles, is how we get out of the closet. The assignment cannot be fulfilled inside the four walls. You can be a part of a ministry and work in the church. But the real advancing of the kingdom happens when you leave here and start operating in your assignment. Right. What is your assignment? Your assignment is the problem mm -hmm. you were created to solve. Everybody in this room mm -hmm. was created to solve a problem. Can I submit to you, and again, I'm just reviewing this, I'm not going to teach you again. You will be remembered for one or two things. Mm -hmm. The problems you create, or the problems you solve. So you got to decide that you're going to be a problem solver. Here's the thing. You should never speak to people about your problems. They're not qualified to solve. Because everybody has an authentication to solve your problem. Okay, if you got money problems, let me tell you something. It's not going to help you to talk to somebody as broke as you. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About money issues. They cannot help you solve that problem. You need, 
like your investor, a banker, somebody with some money. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all ain't got to say yes, that. No, to help you solve money issues. If you're single uh -huh. and you got married friends, All right. it's not your place mm -hmm. to help them solve their marriage problem. You ain't got no baby. <laughs> so you ain't qualified. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah. So just enjoy your singlehood yeah, yeah. and, and become all the woman you need to be or man you need to be before you try to help somebody that's married. Mm. All right. Oh, come on now. Solve their issue. Uh -huh. And married people have to be careful giving their ear to single folk. I had one lady who was having problems with her husband in, in our church in Jackson years ago. She was having problems. And she came, she said, Apostle, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. But sister such and such keeps telling me this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. I said, first of all, sister such and such don't have a husband. Right, right, right. right. Come on. And what you need to do is stop listening to her. <laughs> but watch this. Yeah. But because sister such and such showed up saying, the Lord said, because huh? watch this. Everybody that say thus said the Lord. Uh -huh. Don't it's not hearing from God. That's right. Come on, come on. And she was what she was doing was trying to create a wedge uh -huh. between this man and woman. Right. Long story short, she never stopped listening. Mm. She lost her husband. Uh -huh. Guess who the husband is married to now? Once you stop listening to. <laughs> yeah, because that woman was not qualified to speak into that marriage, and the married woman should have shut her down. Yes, You're married to your husband. The Bible said that in marriage, the bed is undefiled. That's where you ought to be having sex. So if somebody tells you, Lord, says, stop sleeping with your husband, that's the devil. Y'all ain't got to say that. And, and I, I looked at that and I said, that's the devil. You stop listening to that. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Well, she told me he could tell me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. How in the world yeah. Come on. can you be contaminating? Let me tell you. How in the world can you be contaminating your husband? Uh -huh. <laughs> when the Bible says in marriage, uh -huh. the bed is undefined. Glory to God. Bless you, Bishop. So, every one of you in this room are created to solve a problem. Pastor solve spiritual problems. So, if you got spiritual issues, you need to be talking to a leader. Somebody that has the qualification to solve your problem. Now, listen, you can't follow everybody on Facebook that says they're a leader. Because everybody out there ain't qualified to solve your issue. That's right. Some of these people got a phone uh -huh. and no calling. Y'all yeah. ain't got to say that. Oh, All they got is the ability to build their phone and start talking. Yeah, yeah. And because they may say what you want to hear, uh -huh. doesn't mean they're qualified to solve your issue. So y'all get it. Everybody is created to solve some kind of problem. Get them done teaching this again. Uh -huh. go, go back and watch it because that's how we show up. Finding the problem we're created to solve. Mm -hmm. You're a life jacket to somebody that's drowning. You got to find it. Mm -hmm. In order for us to advance the kingdom, you got to discover your assignment. You know why? Because your assignment is never your decision. Oh my God. It's always your discovery. God has already decided what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you don't decide. You just have to discover. It's already done. I told you before he formed you, he knew you. He ordained you. He sanctified you. The assignment is already there. What we have to do is not create assignments we want that don't align with what God said. So many that do it. Especially in this hour. So, in every assignment, it gives us the vehicle, here we go, again, 
to show up in the world. Touch your belly, say, I got to show up in the world. Again, you in the world, but not of the world, but you cannot stop living. Listen, you can't sleep here. You, you got to go home, right? Yes, sir. You can't sleep here. <laughs> Listen, you, you can't live at church. You live at your house, right? I can't live here. I got to go home. These folk, you know, man, how much money I pay these people? These folk will tell me, look, boys, you got, you got only time you get to be here. In the time that it's been allotted for you to be here. Yeah. All right. So I gotta go home uh -huh. and live in the world. Yes, yes, so the question you. becomes again how do you show up as a citizen? Mm -hmm. Not as a church member. How are you showing up on your job? How are you showing up at the family reunion? <laughs> how are you showing up at Walmart? Mm -hmm. What do people see when they see you and you start talking about Jesus? How do they equate your walk and your talk? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we, we talk a great game. But when it comes down to really showing up mm -hmm. and being what God says we are, mm -hmm. many of us retreat back to that closet. Mm -hmm. God said we got to get our foot off that foot, that foot, and become citizens. Again, a kingdom citizen, not see what? See, the church has harped on membership. And that ain't what God told us to do. The Bible said we're no longer foreigners and strangers, but citizens. He didn't say we was members. We're citizens of a kingdom. But we become so number driven. Most leaders, let me look at this camera and say that. Because if you're listening to me, mega pastor. Please share this with your leader. I want, I need you, I, those that follow me that you won't ever come to church, but you go to New Birth. You, you go to Word of Faith. Listen, you go, glory to God, to Victory World Church, but you follow me in my inbox. Want a prayer. Want a word. Listen, share this with your pastor. Because at the end, I ain't scared, I promise you, on no day. I'm in 3418 Dogwood Drive, glory to God, Hakeville, Georgia. Come see me, I got something for you, glory to God. Listen, but I need you to share this because we're not interested in building members. We're interested in developing kingdom citizens who will be deployed. Most of these leaders, yeah, you, that go to New Birth, you just a number. And what happens is, oh, glory to Jesus, I'm going to say this. Your pastor is looking at you as a stockholder and shareholder to keep the business of ministry functional and operational. He can care less about deploying you into the world and being a light and taking dominion and taking authority and taking control. Now, somebody please TikTok that, share that, reel that, do something with it. Because at the end of the day, we got to redefine what we're doing. Well, what are we really doing? The church is in a popularity race. Everybody wants who's hot and who's not. Who's in and who's out. Who's got a big church? Who's got a little church? Who's got huge facilities? Who's got little facilities? I'm not concerned about all of that. I want to know who's got some power. Who's got some anointing? Who's got the glory? Who can cast out a devil? Who can get me healed when I'm sick? I ain't looking for facilities and pretty and pageants. I need to see the power of the living God. I'm talking about these elements of citizenship. Come on. This is how you show your allegiance. Mm. Y'all pray for me. Mm -hmm. Glory to <laughs> God. Y'all right. You all right. The Bible says here, we're going to just walk through these few verses. Mm -hmm. Luke 5 and 1. Y'all there? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. The Bible says, and it came to pass. Uh -huh. Somebody said, Michael, how in the world they got something to do with citizenship? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. As a citizen in the, in the kingdom, the first thing you need to do, hear me, is make history with God. Whenever you read and it came to pass in the Bible, it means it happened. That indicates.
case history. And what God does, he puts you in seasons where you can make history in private with him. If you make history with God in private, watch this, he'll make history with you in public. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He'll show the world that he's your God. All right. All right. So he'll allow you to go through things, glory to God, that the world don't understand. You're supposed to be saved. How are you going through that? Yeah. Why are you having that attack on your life? Why are you missing this and missing that? Why you, why you got to keep going through crisis? Well, he does it because he wants to create history and show the world what a real citizen looks like. Because next time they look at you, well, how did you get out of that struggle? How did you get out of that crisis? How did you get so blessed? How did you get that money? Just look at them and say, it can't pass. You know, I, I just kept living. I kept going. It can't, just let somebody say, it came to pass. I made history with God. Can I tell you something? What you're going through today, it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. It came to pass. Glory to God. It came to move on and give you his. in situations to give us revelation to give us history so I'm going to try, try to be, be good now and it came to pass somebody say, say this we say, as a kingdom citizen I must make history with God he said it came to pass that as the people Pressed upon him to hear the word of God. My God. Watch this. Mm -hmm. He makes history mm -hmm. that out of the history you become a light mm -hmm. that people begin to press into mm -hmm. because they want to hear your story mm -hmm. and your testimony of how you came through right. what you were challenged with. All right, all right. Woo! Oh, God. Yeah. So they pressed upon him not for entertainment. Mm -hmm. They didn't press upon him for the lights being out in church and the LEDs on the wall. Mm -hmm. All this stuff's nice. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Right. It's nice. It's yeah. good to have. Yeah, yeah. But I was in a church a few weeks ago. I got up to preach. All the lights was up. I said, please cut the lights off. Because I need to see these folk face. I'm up in a spotlight so me, I can't see nobody. I said, no. I need to see them. I need to look in their eyeball. Cut these lights on now. God operates in light. You don't operate in darkness. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God come on. come on, come on. I need to see. Yeah. And it seemed like they were moving too slow. I said, did y'all hear what I said? <laughs> Don't make me have no West End flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please cut these lights on. Woo. I, I mean, again, too, I got to know who's around me. So I'm, the way I preach, somebody might sneak up. I need to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> God. Come on now. But you want to survive what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can have people pressing upon you. Say, so I need to know how you got through that. Yeah. I need to know how you survived. And that's why you have to be transparent about your testimony. Come on. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we overcome through Jesus' blood, but then we got to start testifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some sinners around you, I've been telling y'all, that's watching your life. And you got to start testifying to them. The testimony is a monologue about the text. So you talk about what you've been through and how the word brought you out. The significant thing about here, they press to hear the word. Watch this. The word, word here, oh God, here we go. It's logos. 
Not rhema, it's logos. Logos means to put it in logical sense. To take what God did and what God said and make it make sense. Because we, we can't impress sinners with deep theology. Sinners need to feel what we've been through. So we need to make it make sense. And point back to God and say, hey, I never would have got through this. Never. If God wouldn't have brought me out. My God, thank you. Anybody here ever been through something? Yeah. That you can look back on your shoulder? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know it was God. Yeah. You know it wasn't you that brought you out. You look back on your shoulder, you know, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I'd be dead. I, I don't know about you, but I can talk about me. I would have lost my mind. I'd probably be in jail. I'd probably be crazy. But thanks be to God who brought me over. to hear. Yes, thank you. Lord. Watch this. Thank you. Something changes with how people receive you as a citizen. Listen to this. When you make history with God. Yes. Notice the scripture say they press to hear. They want to hear you now. Their heart has been fixed to receive. Your hear is Oh my God, A-K-O-U in Greek is one of your words like acoustics. Interestingly enough, this building has great acoustics. All throughout the building, the acoustics are amazing. That's why I can sing sometime in this building. Get me in a building with bad acoustics. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, let me tell you something. Acoustics means full sound. It means, watch this, hear, a.k.o. you, to listen with an intent to do what you hear. So when you start testifying about history to those that hear you, they're listening with an intent to do what you did All right. so they can have the same experience in their life. Every experience you go through is not about you. Everyone you go through is about somebody else. So true, preacher. So true. That's good. Everything you go through is a setup. Yeah. Watch this. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, all things work together for good. Yes, sir. The word work is energy in Greek, which means it has an energy that pulls every ingredient together. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example there. Working together. Working is like putting a cake with all of his ingredients in a soul. Watch this. A cake has eggs. I'm sitting and watching my wife make cake from scratch. Eggs, flour, sugar, butter, all that stuff. She's doing something with it. But when she puts it all together and puts it in that oven, that energy, that heat pulls the ingredients together. And that cake is amazing. But watch this. If you take the egg <laughs> and you've got some folk, I don't know what's wrong with you. But for practice, they eat eggs raw by themselves for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I know growing up, I see these people that lift weights and in fitness, they be bringing just drink a whole. You ever seen that? Something's wrong with that. I need the egg to be cooked. Scrambled, fried, something. I, I can't do that. I can't even do no over easy run. I, can't, I, mean, I need this egg cooked. I need, and listen, I, I want to make sure it's dead. Because that embryo is still alive. And they just are drinking it. But if you separate the ingredients, none of that stuff is good alone. But God says he takes all of the stuff you go through. Work it together for good. The word good in Greek is profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. He works it. You ask a businessman to define profit, he's going to tell you what's left over after the expenses have been paid and covered. 
That's profit. So God takes you through, works things together, so you have something left to wave in the enemy's face and say, look, you should have killed me while you had a chance. You should have stopped me before I got to the church. You should have killed me when I was a hoe. You should have killed me when I was alive. Oh, you only got to say nothing. You should have killed me when I didn't have, when I was cussing and doing my big stuff. You should have killed me when I was smoking reefer. You should have killed me. Y'all ain't talking to me here. When I was drinking Hennessy and Coke. But you messed up and let me, oh, y'all ain't got to talk. And let me get to the house of God. And now God's going to get some profit out of this mess. Verse 2 says, watch this. Oh. We, we talk about citizenship. So there's history. It says, every citizen every in, the kingdom in the kingdom has history, has history with, God. with God. Religious people don't know how to move through the changes that happen in the life to create history. Number two, watch this. And he saw, he stood on Lake Genesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake. Listen to this. But the fishermen were gone out of them and washing their nets. Hear this, y'all. Every citizen has season where they want to quit. I always say, if you're doing something that you ain't never wanted to quit, it ain't much. But anything be that comes from God. Your flesh My God. has seasons where it wants to throw in the towel. Without a doubt. And like these fishermen, wash their nets. Listen, these fishermen were professional. Yes, they were. They were taught to fish until they caught something. In this instance, they caught nothing. And Jesus looked over the enemy and saw them quit. Watch this. Jesus is always attracted to citizens who feel like giving up. So when you get in those moments, I want you to know you're never alone. All you got to do is call on Jesus. All you got to do is open yourself up because he's watching you. I think you say this with me. Say, God, thank you for watching me. Say, thank you that when I wanted to quit, you love me so much that you stayed with me and you did not allow me to give up. Let me tell you some different seasons when I threw in the towel. I quit. Well, God said, okay, dude, you can't quit. You're too valuable. He picks the towel up and says, hell no, bro. Throws it right back. Because he loves us that much. I need you to keep going. Because what's in you, the world needs. So all of you want to say, okay, I'm through with this Jesus. I'm telling you, I done been there. I, Lord, I don't want another prophecy. I don't want you to say nothing else to me. I, listen, right now I'm going through hell anyway. I might as well go through hell to hell. Listen, listen leave me alone. And God says, no. You're too valuable. You got to keep going. It's a good thing to know that as a kingdom citizen, he's always watching over you. Watch this. To protect his investment. Because he sent you to this planet as a citizen to deliver something. To release something. To give this world something they cannot get without you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your assignment is unique to you. And there are people that need what you carry. All right, all right. Can I submit to you this afternoon? You are God's delivery system in the earth. All right, all right. You are still alive because you've got something you got to deliver. There's something you got to drop off that I can't drop off. 
Because your assignment is unique to you. My assignment is unique to me. So you got to discover why you're here and keep going and know that if I give up, that's the only way I fail. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to lose is if you quit. You got to keep going and decide, you know what? I'm going to be just like a tree planted by rivers of water. You can throw whatever you want. I ain't moving. Because I know who planned it. Right. Here's the interesting thing about when you make a history with God. You have to be planned. Sometimes when you're being planted, mm -hmm. it looks like you're being buried. Because yeah. right. you have to throw dirt on the seed mm -hmm. and on the porch. Mm -hmm. You better choose to be a seed. You ain't dead yet. Your heart is still beating. Yes. My God. And that's an indicator that God needs you. Mm -hmm. So every citizen not only makes history with God, mm -hmm. but every citizen is being watched by God. Mm -hmm. Even when they're tempted to quit. Mm -hmm. Or if they do quit. Verse 3. Watch this. And he entered into one of the ships. In this case, citizenship. Mm. Which was Simon and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. Two principles here for citizens. One, you're not alone. The king of your government is with you. That's why I don't care. You know, I, I care because I'm in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So I pray for our earthly leaders. Mm -hmm. But it really don't bother me. Who's sitting on the throne in the White House? Amen. Because I know who's sitting on the throne in heaven. So whoever's on the throne in the White House, listen to this. The Bible said the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. So as a citizen, if I command the Lord and begin to speak to the Lord by faith to turn the heart of whatever king it is, I trust whether it's Trump or whoever, he can turn the heart of that king. Because I trust in a theocracy. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're not alone as a kingdom citizen. God is with you. Yeah. Yeah. Touch yourself and say, God's with me. God me. Say, I'm not by myself. Not by and you know what? Yeah. Father, yeah. Man, you grew yeah. up in the same neighborhood and stuff. Oh, yeah. Listen, when, when I was growing up, I wasn't the baddest person on the block. But I ran with some bad dudes. So you would have thought I was the baddest Negro on the street. Because I knew who was with me. Are y'all hearing me? I show up, we get ready to fight, I'm hitting first. Scanning and everybody, but I know who behind me. I'm swinging and get out the way and they go get them. Because <laughs> I knew who was with me. But just think about this as a kingdom citizen. You're going through life and the king of kings is with you. Always. You ain't got to fear nothing. Because exactly. he done entered into your ship. For real. For real. For real. We didn't just take the right hand of fellowship. Mm. Or some church, they sit out the chair and sit in the chair. We didn't just do that. We came to a kingdom. God. With a real king. Who is involved, imminent in our life. My God. See, most people want the right hand fellowship. Mm -hmm. I was talking to one lady. She was saying, oh, Apostle, I follow you online. I love your teachings. I just can't leave my church. Mm -hmm. That was my great, great grandmother church. <laughs> and all my family is there. Yeah. And she said, Apostle, I got a funeral plot right next to the church. Oh. And by virtue of my membership, if I leave and move my membership, I'm going to lose my funeral plot. I said, ma'am, you're dying spiritually. And if you don't get out of there, you're going to need that funeral plot quicker than you think. But if you come and get in a kingdom culture where you can learn how to progress, and live in the world, you can buy you another funeral plot. Yeah. Yeah. But you, and then I thought about how the, the promise.
was taking the levels. Why, why do we sit here and die? Yeah. Some people that sit in the same place and just die. Just die. That's a problem, man. Okay. Set Jesus on my ship. Here's what he does when he gets on the ship as a citizen. He starts rearranging stuff. This wasn't his ship. But he got on it and said to Peter, thrust this ship out a little far away. He said, I need you to get away from your comfort zone. You'll never change your condition if you don't change your position. God says, you're going to shift your position so you can receive something different. A lot of times we're, we're trying to get the same thing from the same environment. Right. I was telling my middle son, Ben, yesterday, on my way back from Mississippi, we were so far. Ben is the, you know, he, he, he's a worshiper, he loves God, and, but I have to keep it balanced. So I said to him, I said, son, there are some people I used to love to hear preach. Some of the people you love to hear preach now. I said, I don't want to hear them preach now. He said, what, man? They're great. I said, no, they're great for you. I have changed my position. Because if I kept trying to get what I needed from them, my condition would stay the same. So now I listen to people that feeds me where I'm going. That feeds the vision and assignment on my life. So I asked him, I said, so what changed? He said, well, that sounds like you grew. I said, that's exactly what happened. I got what, not saying anything's wrong with him. And I said, you stay right there, keep getting that. Because watch this, it's important that we know our audience. I see some preachers, every Sunday they stand up, they got babies in front of them, and they're feeding the meat. Dangerous. Because the Bible said you can't give this baby meat. It'll choke her to death. It'll kill her. And just to show how you're a revelator and how much mystery you can pull out the text, you giving these babies all this meat and they choke you to death, don't even know who they are. Confused. Because a child needs milk. There's a process in how you get fed. You got to grow through process. And when God says, I'm going to put you in a house of meat, that means you mature to a point where you're ready to be deployed into another place in your assignment. I'm almost done. Say, say this with me. Say, I got to change my position so I can change my condition. Listen, you'll never leave where you are until you decide where you would rather be. Let that marinate for a minute. As long as you keep accepting where you are, and you decide and resolve that where you are is all, you'll never get to the next place. As a matter of fact, People try to get promoted before time because you'll never be promoted from your present position until you get overqualified for that position. You got to outgrow the pot. My grandma used to plant and she had to pray God for real. And sometimes stuff will start growing too much from the pot. Instead of throwing the plant away, she get a bigger pot. And she replanted. Sometimes you got to get overcrowded in your situation. My God. So God can retool you, replant you, and cause you to relearn. Right. Are y'all here? I'm almost done. I'm operating about two hours of sleep. Y'all pray for me. Watch what happens when you change your position. As a citizen, Jesus sits down on the throne of your heart 
And he says, I'm going to teach you out of the ship. So he started teaching on leadership. There's a lesson that is regimented and systematically devised in the plan of God that he wants the person to teach. There's some things, and this is what Paul, when the Apostle Paul said this, you don't need a teacher for. Right. Some things the Holy Spirit will become the teacher. That teach, watch this, the Bible did say, he will teach you all things. So when I reposition myself, I position myself when I'm no longer dependent upon a man and a microphone, a woman and a microphone, a man and a phone. But I can become a steward of the Holy Spirit. I've had sessions with the Holy Spirit that have blew my mind. Throughout my life, I've had, to, listen, I've had this particular thing happen to me five times exactly. Because the Spirit of God wanted to make sure I got this. So he woke me up out of my sleep on these five occasions. One, I was 19 years old. He woke me up and set me in the middle of my dormitory. And said, I'm about to teach you something. And I'm sitting there like, what? <laughs> I hear him. I feel him. I don't see him. Right. But then this fire, I physically see this fire with my eyes come from my ceiling and separate my dorm room in half. So now I'm on one side of the fire. And there's something on the other side of the fire because I start hearing twisting. And then he starts pacing back and forth and starts talking. He said, get a piece of paper and write down everything I tell you. And for four hours, which seemed like two minutes, because he's a jerk. Mm -hmm. I came out of this experience with like 30 pages of notes mm -hmm. from being taught of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, and on five different occasions, this has happened. Mm -hmm. And every one, it was a defining moment in my life that I needed that instruction to go forward. But every time, watch this, I was in a place spiritually to receive that. Mm -hmm. My life was holy. I was a student of the word. My prayer life was on point. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in a position to receive a change in condition through the teaching of the Holy Spirit directly himself. The Bible said he'll teach us all. We can have those sessions every day. <laughs> he can show up. And you know what? I learned later that he separated the room with the fire because I couldn't look directly at him. And all I could see was feet walking back and forth. So teach me, Lord. I'm your student. Here we go, number four. Now he left speaking. When he got through preaching, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. Here we go. Every kingdom citizen has instructions they must follow. Remember, that in the beginning I told you, you cannot be a citizen if you don't have allegiance to the government that you're a part of. you got to obey the laws. you got to do what is told of you. This assignment here was launch into the deep. That means... What you want is not where you've been looking. See, they have been fishing all night. So Jesus says, I'm going to give you some instructions to show you who I really am. My God. And I'm going to make you understand that when you follow instructions, there's a blessing in obedience. And that's what dual citizenship is about. It's about being a good citizen on earth but also being a good citizen according to the things that heaven instructs. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can't tell your God dream 
God's big plan for your life. To people who only think carnally and can only see what they see. You will frustrate yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you will never obey what God said. My God. Because you have this negativity in your ear. Ain't no way you can do that. People telling you that ain't what you are, that ain't what you're supposed to do. You ain't got no money. You have no resources. You have no help. You have no manpower. Listen, I listen to that crap. I never do nothing. You got to watch out into the deep, and the voices yes. in your ear yes. My God. Yes. need to be those that are telling you, with God, you can do all things. Yes. They need to be telling you, if God said it, so be it. Yes. If God said it, so shall it come to pass. Yes. You need people to say to you, yes. you are more than meets the eye. Glory to God, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, when I, my son, Junior, there, when he was graduating uh, from middle school, I remember this. When he was graduating from middle school, the thing was, we are more than meets the eye. And the person that was talking was talking about the Transformers. And they were informing the students, you may see a car, but that car is more than meets the eye. Inside of that car is huge potential. See, when you look at yourself, you can't see what mama said you were, what the negative word curses said you were, what people spoke over your life. you got to decree and declare, I am what God says I am. I wish I had somebody here that realized you are what God says you are. I don't care what the devil said, what any demon said. You are what God says you are. There's people that speak in a higher order mm -hmm. that will pull you to another place. Yes, but when you listen to shallow stuff, my God, you stay shallow. Yes, he said, let down your nets for a draw. What's a draw, Michael? It's a harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, the word actually is agra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, uh, this word is agra. It means to catch, to hunt, to haul in a bunch. Watch this. And then receive the harvest of the seed. God says, I want you to have much. I want you to have what's been appointed to you. What you deserve as a citizen. I read this scripture yesterday in Romans 8 that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are heirs with if we're heirs of God, that means we got a legal right to what God has. So many are living beneath their pen. My God. It's because we have not accepted that we're really citizens. And we got a right to a drought. Look at verse 5. I'm almost done. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. This is Simon Peter, mm -hmm. who's always got something to say mm -hmm. with his smart self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, Master, look, I know you're Jesus. Mm -hmm. I heard about you. You raised the dead. Mm -hmm. You got Lazarus up. Mm -hmm. You done turned them folk water into wine. I know who you are. Yeah. But we fish you. This is what we do. Ain't nothing you can tell us about fishing. He said, we done worked all night and got nothing. Think about your life, your time with God. Have you been toiling all night and haven't got nothing? yourself why it's because Jesus often disrupts what we do best to show us we can do nothing without him he'll disrupt your whole situation to prove to you you need me you need me these were fishermen and he says I'm trying to 
bring you to a place where you ain't dependent on your skills, your ability, your connections, your bank account. He says, I need you to depend on me. In other words, the way you've been doing it, it ought to have proved to you by now it doesn't work. The father is saying, I need you to trust my way of doing things. <laughs> I need you to trust how I turn things around. He said, we've been doing what we do. We took nothing. But here's what I love about God. The Bible says that Peter said, nevertheless, nevertheless. at thy word. He said, I'll let that listen. I'm a fisherman. I know what I'm doing. But because you said it, because you're the master. Watch this. He said, nevertheless. Anytime you read nevertheless in the Bible, it means that God's option is never less than yours. All right. His option is, oh my God, his option is always greater than yours. Mm -hmm. He said, nevertheless. I heard one mother say, God's butt is always bigger than your butt. You say, but, no, no, his butt is always bigger. Yeah. His word is always right. Whatever Jesus says is true. If he said it, it's the truth. So when you're a kingdom citizen, you obey the instruction. If he says it, you do it. And the Bible says there's a reward for that. Let me move. I'm just giving you these quick. I'm going to teach these this month. These principles. And when they obeyed, watch this. The Bible said they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets break. God said, if you're a kingdom citizen, you're supposed to be operating in a net breaking anointing where you have too much to fit in what you have. You're supposed to be living in overflow of power, overflow of anointing, overflow of his way of doing things. The Bible said the nets break. If I'm a kingdom citizen, I should be operating in too much. Oh, Lord. Well, anytime the world encounters me, they encounter God. Because the nets break. Because of my obedience. So really what we have to check, guys, and I'm done. You can play the song for me, son. I'm done. For real. If I'm not here, where's the place of disobedience? Where have I gotten off? What is happening internally that keeps me from living in more than enough? Where I, watch this. Where you're not catching nothing. I told a man one time, he was like, man, a while ago, my wife makes way more money than me. He said, I go to work every single day, and she makes, she makes way much. I mean, she, I mean, and he was like, man, I feel bad as a man. I said, sir, don't feel bad as a man. I said, one, you're blessed to have that woman, yeah. that she's able to do that. I said, you keep supporting her in the career. I said, but what matters is you go hunt. You go out and you get something and bring it in. I said, it ain't what you bring, but you're going out every day bringing something as a man. I said, keep going and bring it, doing what you can do as a man. And I told him, I said, God's going to break the net for you because of your loyalty. Because of your desire to be the chief provider, he's going to do it for you. Watch this, long story short. Four years forward, same man, kept obeying God, bringing in what he could. Watch this. Didn't know God was watching him. Didn't know that his boss was watching him. 
his boss decided, I'm going to retire. And I want you to have this business. Gave him the whole business. He surpassed his wife at that one moment a thousand times more. And she was doing with him. Obedience as a citizen is better than sacrifice. Y'all stand up, please. Stand. And I'm going to take you back to where we was at the beginning. Just close your eyes. Again, because you have a tendency to look in. This is serious business, man. God wants us to show up in the world as citizens. He wants us to make history with him. He wants us to testify to his glory. That he could continue to add to his church such as would be saved. So that he could prosper us. And that we could be a light. Not just in material good, but in our power and anointing that we flow in in the world. That we can take dominion. I want you to take an introspective today, this afternoon. I want you to see yourself. And I want you to be honest with yourself. And ask God to show you that place of disobedience. That place where you fell and fallen short. That place where you missed the mark. That place where perhaps you haven't been the best citizen. You know, citizens walk by faith and not by sight. They trust their father. So maybe you've been doubting. Maybe you've been living in fear. Maybe you've been complaining. Where have you come short? Come on. As you, as you begin to look in, I will just begin to talk to God in your own way in this room. I don't want you to wait on me, but I want you to begin to pray yourself. Because there is more, saints, there is more, darlings. God has more for us than we've ever seen. Come on, come on, open your mouth and begin to pray, please. We give you praise, God. We give you glory. Father, help us. As we're praying, as we're looking, open our eyes. Father, as the old mother in the church I grew up in used to say, turn the searchlight on our soul. And if you find anything that should be, Take it out, God. Strengthen us. We want to be saved. We want to be whole, God. We want to be kingdom citizens that represent you, that make history with you. God, we won't complain about what we permit. We, we won't complain about what you can change. But God will trust you to bring the change. Some of your housing bitterness and unforgiveness and you can't progress you cannot move as a citizen in the kingdom because you're holding somebody you need to forgive you need to let go and I heard God say let them go some of you are battling with molestation and rape from your past somebody violated you you are innocent God said to tell you it's not your fault there's no wrong way to be at home. There's no wrong way to be a child. You can't keep beating yourself up about something that's not your fault. Come on, I need you to take an introspective. This thing is stopping your nets from breaking. And God says, I want a net breaking anointing to take over your life. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Open up your mouth. And receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. How bad do you want it? You got to want to go. You got to want to have net breaking power, net breaking resources, net breaking healing. You got to want to have net breaking influence in your life. Lord Jesus, I'll be 
true. I'll be true. Lord Jesus, I'll be true. For there's a race to be run. There are victories to be won. Every hour by thy power I'll I'll be true. I'll be true. Lord Jesus, I'll be true. You gotta be true to him. I'll be true. And with yourself. Lord Jesus, I'll be true. For there's a race to be run. There are Tell the Lord, yes. Come on. Come on. We're going to.